Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our physiology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about the difference between the slow wave rhythms and the spike potentials. We discussed the calcium calmodulin system, and we talked about the enteric nervous system, which includes the myenteric plexus for motility and the submucosal plexus. Or secretions. Today we'll talk more about motility because we have two types of motility. We have propulsive movement or peristalsis moving forwards and we have the mixing or segmental movement moving back and forth chop chop chop. Before we get started remember this is called oral and this is called anal so the direction that goes this way is called orad. The direction that goes this way, caudally, is called caudad. Remember, no pain, no gain, no digestion, no absorption. In order for you to absorb these lovely nutrients into your blood, first you need to digest them. And you cannot digest them without motility and secretions. We'll talk about motility today. What kind of muscles do we have in the gut? We have smooth muscles. These are non-striated, non-branching, involuntary, uninucleated, autonomic, which means automatic, which means it's out of your control. Does it have autonomy? Yes, we have the interstitial cells of Cajal. Do we have troponin? No. Instead, we have calcium calmodulin system. We talked about the difference between slow waves and spike potentials before. Slow waves are just rhythms buzzing in the background. They are not true action potentials. They have a rhythm in the stomach. They happen three times per minute. Duodenum about 12, terminal ileum about 9. This is important and you will understand why very soon. As for spike potentials, true action potentials, they cause the true contractions, which means peristalsis movements and mixing movements, hashtag motility. Here are the slow wave rhythms humming and buzzing in the background, on top of which we lay the true action potential, the spike potential in the foreground. The depolarization or activation is caused by calcium influx or calcium sodium influx. Once calcium enters into your smooth muscle cell, it's going to bind calmodulin. Then it will activate a kinase which adds a phosphate to your myosin light chain. Now you have myosin light chain phosphate, which is active, which will cause contraction. Hashtag motility. Here is my enteric nervous system. It's automatic. We have my enteric for motility, submucosal for secretion. On top of that, you can stimulate it or inhibit it. But even without the outside nerves, if you remove the parasympathetic and the sympathetic, still your gut will be able to move and to secrete because it's autonomic, it has its own intrinsic activity. It is strong, opinionated, and does not depend on outsiders. The wall of your gut is here, mucosa, submucosa, musculosa, serosa. Where do we find the submucosal plexus? In the submucosa. Remember, submucosal, in the submucosa, for secretions. Where do I find my myenteric plexus? In the musculosa. Myenteric musculosa for motility. This myenteric plexus is located exactly between the inner circular muscle layer and the outer longitudinal muscle layer, both of which are inside the muscularis externa, i.e. the musculosa. Here is my lovely submucosal plexus in the submucosa for secretions, and here's the myenteric plexus in the musculosa for motility. Because your gut has two functions, mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. Mechanical is motility. Thank you, myenteric plexus, who exist in the musculosa between inner circular and outer longitudinal layers. Sympathetic hates the gut. It will lower and decrease motility and secretion. But parasympathetic is pro-gut. It is rest and digest. Therefore, it will boost motility and secretions. So if you want your gut to move more, talk to your vagus and talk to your pelvic nerves, which will stimulate your myenteric plexus for motility. Types of movements in your gut. Propulsive movements, also known as peristalsis. What does peri mean? Around, because we're moving around food. Imagine that my food bolus is here. You know what's going to happen? Contraction behind, relaxation in front. Contraction behind and relaxation in front. 
around the food, Perry stalls it. We also have mixing movements to chop, chop, chop the food and mix it with your enzymes. Let's compare between the two. We have the peristaltic movements here and we have the mixing movements here. Peristalsis, also known as propulsive movement, propels the food forwards and spreads the chyme, which is the food particles, out along the mucosa. Mixing movements mixes the food particles with digestive enzymes and look at this. We contract, we constrict, look at that. These segmental movements will shear, shear, shear and chop, chop, chop your food. Direction, propulsive is moving forwards, i.e. propulsively, i.e. from proximal to distal, from oral to anal. How about the mixing movements? These are segmental movements back and forth or sideways or up and down. Shear, shear, shear and chop, chop, chop. These are constrictive segmental movements. Sight. Peristalsis is everywhere in the alimentary canal, beginning in the esophagus all the way until the rectum and anal canal. Moreover, you also find peristalsis in the ducts of your glands, in the ducts of the bile, and even in the ureter, which exists outside of the gastrointestinal system. As for mixing, they happen in some parts of the alimentary canal. Why some parts? Why not all parts? Because peristalsis alone can also perform the mixing function, especially if you propel the food forwards, but the sphincter here, distal to it, is closed. Oh, so you'll push, but this is closed. Push, closed. So it will go back and forth, back and forth, shear, 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 and chop, chop, chop. This is especially true in the pylorus and the antrum of your stomach, when your stomach is closed by the pyloric sphincter. Extra notes, peristalsis, how does it happen? Food will cause distension of the gut, which causes stretch. Stretch releases local chemicals such as serotonin. Serotonin will activate the sensory neurons and then you have a lovely reflex. Sensory neurons will trigger the motor. Sensory, motor, that's the reflex. Usually it happens via the sympathetic nervous system. Remember the pre-vertebral ganglia? such as the celiac plexus, superior mesenteric plexus, and inferior mesenteric plexus, collectively known as the aortic plexus. Okay, medicosis, you told me that if the food is here, I will contract behind it, but relax in front of it. How did I contract behind it? Because you had cholinergic neurons passing retrograde, which means backwards, they will secrete substance B, acetylcholine. As you know, substance B and acetylcholine are pro-smooth muscle contraction. You will contract behind the bolus. How do I relax in front? We have cholinergic neurons passing anti-grade forwards and they release vasoactive intestinal peptide, nitric oxide and adenosine triphosphate. All of them cause smooth muscle relaxation in front of your chyme. Moreover, do you remember the last time you had some gastroenteritis? Irritation of your gut. What does that do? Peristaltic crush. Very strong movements that you can feel. Oh, my gut is churning. That's exactly true. Because these are helping sweep the irritants away from your gut. We call this the peristaltic crush. Similar ones are the migratory motor complexes, which purge and clean everything out of your guts so that no particles are left behind. Mixing movements, extra notes. These are localized concentric contractions, segmental movement. The maximum frequency is determined by the slow wave rhythms. Do you remember the numbers? In the stomach, three times per minute. In the duodenum, 12 times per minute. Terminal ileum, nine times per minute. This is exactly the number of mixing movements in each part of your gut. With all of this sideways, segmental, constrictive, back and forth movement, shear, 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 and chop, 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 your bowel will look like a chain of sausages. Man, doctors are hungry. Unfortunately, some professors take it too far, and they try to trick you with some obscure questions, but with medicosis, you are in good hands. Here is the deal. This is only talking about peristalsis, which is propulsive movement, not the mixing movement. Remember we said what? Contraction behind, relaxation in front of the food. Okay, how did contraction behind happen? It was contraction of the inner circular muscle in the musculosa. 
not the outer longitudinal. The outer longitudinal is in fact relaxed. What's happening to this lumen? It's getting narrower. Say it again, it's getting narrower. So the radius is going down. And according to this equation, when the radius goes down, what happens to resistance? It goes up. Amazing. And according to this equation, when my resistance goes up, what's going to happen to pressure? It also goes up because the relationship between resistance and pressure is direct. Okay, so resistance is up, pressure is up. What's going to happen to my forward flow? Remember that flow is delta P over R. What's the R? Resistance. Oops. So resistance went up. What do you think is going to happen to flow? It will go down. The exact opposite happens distal to the bolus. We have relaxation in front. How do you relax? Well, the inner circular muscles will relax. The outer longitudinals will contract to keep the food moving forwards and flowing forwards. Okay, if we say relaxation in front, what do you think happened to this lumen? It's dilated. So radius goes up, resistance goes down. When resistance goes down, pressure goes down. When resistance goes down, what's going to happen to my flow? It increase. Flow forwards and you keep moving. Contract behind, relax in front. Contract behind, relax in front. This is how you move the food forwards. Step by step, proximal to distal. Now let's make it clinical. The first clinical note is gastroenteritis causes irritation which triggers a peristaltic crush which makes you feel crampy but also gets rid of the irritants in your gut. This peristaltic rush might also contribute to the diarrhea. Next, we have Hirschsprung disease, also known as aganglionic megacolon. I love the name. Mega means big. Colon. The colon is big. A, no, or without. Ganglion, without ganglia. Part of the colon is born without ganglia. Really? Yeah. Therefore, there is no myenteric plexus and there is no submucosal plexus. The parasympathetic and the sympathetic will be unable to communicate with the colon. Add to this, it also lacks the enteric nervous system. When this part of the colon cannot contract, what's going to happen? You will not be able to defecate. Therefore, there will be failure to pass meconium. What is meconium, you might ask? It's the stool of a newborn, baby's poop. So this segment of the colon is abnormal. However, the segment proximal to it is absolutely normal. It has ganglia. It's able to contract. It will contract. Trying to pass the stool forwards, it will be unable to because this distal part is not listening. I will contract. Distal part is not listening. So stool will pile up also here. So you'll end up with the distended proximal part, which is physiologically normal, and a diminished distal part, which is physiologically abnormal. And this drives students nuts on the exam, because they think that the part that is abnormal physiologically should also be abnormal and distended morphologically. Not true. The part that is abnormal physiologically will appear normal to the naked eye. And the part that is normal physiologically will appear distended morphologically. Of course, this baby might suffer from chronic constipation, abdominal distension, and when nothing can move downwards, the only way is upwards. Bilious vomiting. Vomiting contaminated with bile because it's coming from below the stomach. Hirschsprung disease is relatively common in children with Down syndrome. On physical exam, there is classic disgusting squirt sign. Basically, the doctor inserts a gloved finger into the anal canal and boom! Squirting of tons of feces pieces will explode in your face and you will hear a very loud fart. Doctors do not say fart, we try to be professional, so we say flatus. How can you diagnose it? Do abdominal x-ray, proximally distended colon, distally no distension. You can perform a contrast enema, which will show you the transition zone, which is usually at the rectosigmoid junction between the rectum and the sigmoid colon. If you biopsy these segments and look under the microscope, it will confirm that the proximal part has ganglia and is distended, the distal part lacks ganglia, lacks the enteric nervous system, no myenteric, no submucosal, nothing is there. The treatment is surgical correction. 
according to Dr. Carlos Pestana, quote, ingenious operations have been devised to preserve the unique sensory input of the motor impaired rectum while adding normal propulsive capability of the innervated colon, close quote. What's the medicosis way to remember this? Everything here is no. Did the neural crest cells migrate? No, that's why you have no ganglia, because ganglia are part of the peripheral nervous system, which comes from the neural crest during embryology. If there is failure of migration of the neural crest, there will be no ganglia and no enteric nervous system. It's also peripheral, not central nervous system. No myenteric plexus, no submucosal plexus, no motility, no secretion of this segment of the colon, no passage of meconium. Suddenly, all of that stool is gonna gush in your face. Oh no, it's a mess. It's associated with Down syndrome, and Down syndrome have no double palmar crease like normal people. In fact, Down syndrome will have only a singular palmar crease. So you can say no crease. This topic of Hirschsprung disease is part of my surgery high yields course, which you can download today at medicosisperfectionalis.com. We're talking 12 hours of videos. I also have a renal physiology course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.